Do you want to create a calm and serene home free from visual and hidden clutter? If so, join me today to talk about three decluttering methods to get you there. Hi everyone, Liz here. Welcome to Balance Rhythm. A home that is free of clutter is key to designing a minimalist space. But many of us, myself included, have had limited decluttering success and it dawned on me the other day that it's because I don't follow a particular method that gives me long lasting results. So I researched three popular decluttering methods, all very different, to see which one might be best. Ultimately, you'll need to decide which one is the best for you. So here are the three methods in their pros and cons. The first method is one that almost needs no introduction. It's the KonMari method by Marie Kondo. Her first book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up and the follow-up, Spark Joy, has sold many millions of copies. This method is part decluttering, part organization, a process she refers to as tidying. I always thought tidying was just picking up a little and making sure things look presentable, but this process goes deep. It has six steps and includes organizational help in the form of her famous folding method and focuses on what to keep, which are the things that spark joy and getting rid of everything else. So here are the six steps. Number one is to commit. Tidying takes time and effort, and it won't happen overnight, so it's important to commit and see the process through. Number two is to visualize your ideal life. This is where a mood board could really come in handy, or you could just find one picture that represents this ideal life in your new uncluttered space. The third step is to finish discarding before you start organizing. This step involves thanking each item for its service to you and then either finding it a new home or discarding it. Step four is to tidy by kind, not by location. So this involves gathering all items of the same category in one space at one time and going through them all at once. So for instance, you would gather all your clothes throughout the whole house put it in one space and go through it and decide then what to keep and what to discard. Same thing with books and so forth. Step number five is to tidy easy to hard. So Marie Kondo says that the easiest category to start with is clothing. So you would start with clothing first, then you would move on to books, then to papers, and then to kimono, which is a large category of miscellaneous items. And then the final one would be the most difficult, which is sentimental items. And the sixth step is to only keep things that spark joy. These don't have to be things that you're necessarily in love with, but they could just be something that's useful to you that makes your life easier or more enjoyable. The pros of the KonMari method is that it's really thorough and there's a lot of help in the form of the books that get deeply into the decluttering methods for each type of item and then also on organizing those items once you get them decluttered. A possible con of this method is that it could create upheaval around your home from pulling items from different locations and it is a bit of a learning curve because it's pretty involved. Our next decluttering method is the four box method. This method involves, you guessed it, four boxes, one labeled throw away, one labeled keep, another for items that are going to be taken outside the home in some way but not thrown away, meaning donated, sold, or given away. And then the fourth box, for our purposes, I'm gonna say it's the undecided box. I've seen it labeled relocate or put away, and those are actually items that are really key. The pros of this method are that it's flexible and that you could go space by space. And then you also have the undecided box, so if you're stuck on an item, it won't hold up the process. You can just put it in the undecided box and come back to it later. But a possible con is that too many items accumulate in the undecided box, making the process take even longer. It's also important to take action on items that will be donated, sold, or given away pretty quickly so that it doesn't become another source of clutter. And that goes for all of the decluttering methods. A decluttering method that has gained a lot of popularity in recent years is Swedish Death Cleaning. Popularized by the book, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Margareta Magnusson, 
This method is for those who are not only wanting a lighter and more free life for themselves, but are also thinking about not burdening their loved ones with items they may not want. It's a slower approach and starts with items that might be in storage or easy items like clothing. And like the KonMari method, it leaves the more difficult items like sentimental items for last. The fact that it's a slower process could be a pro if you like a more relaxed approach, but it could also be a con if you wanna clear your space to make way for a more minimal lifestyle or a new minimal design. I have to say that after researching these decluttering methods, I'm most drawn to the KonMari method because of the level of detail it gives on decluttering guidance and organization. As challenging as it may seem, I think it's gonna give me the best results in the long run. So I'm gonna go for it and I'll report back. For more on decluttering and intentional design, check out these videos. And if you like this one, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to be the first to know about new videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.